teams are going to approach Battlefield of Eternity. All right, looking into it, we've talked about the strategies that we could see. Now we're actually going to find out what complexity and what COG want to do. The game plan is very, very important here for the draft. You could potentially pick up a few heroes that could take you into the game number three and win it and move you forward in the winner's bracket, setting you up nicely for tomorrow. First ban here, Abathur is now gone. I love the first ban on Abathur. Me too. Because it not only kind of dissuades the Illidan Abathur, right? So they're dissuading Illidan, but they're also just the fact that we talked about how annoying Abathur can be on this battleground. So no matter what, they're they're going for several different contingencies with Abathur instead of just taking out Illidan. Kael'thas will be the follow-up ban here from Cog And why not? He's one of those heroes that if he just hits that chain bomb, it could really throw you off. This allows Kong to be aggressive, group up like we've been seeing a lot in team fights, because they are very good at being near each other and help each other out, and prevent them from not going with that strategy in team fights. Oh, but they're letting Zeratul through, and Complexity is going to pick him up very quickly. That Jaximus has shown his prowess with this hero going in. He's very much just, he's like Zuna, but he's a little bit less ham, but when it comes to the precision, he is certainly there. A little, little reserve can go a long way with Zeratul. You never want to get that hero picked off, and it looks like Coggle moving into Jaina. We've been seeing her all night. The question is always, what is the follow-up? Coggle going straight into Uther, so Jaina, Uther. For Cog, these are great pickups, especially here in the early game. Oh, absolutely. You have to take the Uther away from the Zeratul, so it's not a Divine Shield and Zeratul on top of that, because that would be so incredibly difficult to deal with. And Jaina, a good pickup here as a good damage dealer versus Zeratul because she can get that frost armor, so a little bit safer of a damage dealer, uh, even though she is fairly squishy. A complexity of two more, looks like Leoric will be their first choice. Will they go for damage or maybe a, a support of their own in case they're concerned about, oh no, it's just going to be Leoric Arthas right away. They're best friends. I, I, I mean, I believe it. We always see them play together for good reason. That front line, the control, the zoning, the slows, and the damage that they provide for your team is so very powerful, and they both have very similar looking helmets, so it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the undead capabilities as well can be a little creepy for the opposing team to actually ever want to go into, but you are correct. These guys are very robust. They can get into fights very nicely. Army of the Dead can be great, um, but Cindergosa is also a great thing to pick up here. If you can get a strong Cindergosa with a strong Immortal, you can break down any war or yeah. any keep that you put your eyes on. So the options are there for complexity. Cog falls up into Johanna because they're going to have to pick up the hero because she is one of those heroes that is definitely up there. However, Leoric with Drain Hope can really peel her down very quickly. The Zagara and Toronto bands make perfect sense here, and there is Kerrigan, the Queen of Blades. Finally, we see Glaurung's Kerrigan, and I am so ready to see that aggression. It was a great call, by the way, Trixler, and calling that early on. So I got lucky. Kerrigan, <laughs> Kerrigan plus Johanna has so much power. She's got the Primal Grasp of Impaling Blades. You pair that with Condemn, and it's absolutely disgusting. Level 10, you throw the Blessed Shield in the mix, and it's just, it's Stun City. Yeah, Blessed Shield, Divine Shield, Kerrigan just goes in, Gina helping out with the shield so Kerry can chase down and make sure to get those auto attacks in as well. This comp all together just synergizes very well if they can get the key engaged. But Leorg and Arsis can prevent that from happening nicely, so watch out for that. Complexity, however, does have a chance to get Rexar here. Rexar, with Misha's charge, shuts down Kerrigan really, really well. Love and that's it. something they could pick up. Rainer will be the first follow-up. What is that fifth hero? Well, most likely we'll see a support there. I'm wondering what it will be, though. But let's take a look at Rainer, as he's a pretty interesting pickup here, but he does do a lot of auto attack damage. And that's what we mentioned about being able to deal consistent damage to those immortals. So that's a really nice pickup there for them. They will still need their final pick here. What will it be? We've seen them experiment with Karazim. I'm actually, I'm actually a little bit surprised that we're seeing Rainer over someone like Nazebo. When you have this big front line, right. Nazebo has a lot of excellent safe poke on this battleground. And on top of that, Ravenous Spirit, well, there's a big case for it here. Sure, Kerrigan, Johanna, they can get in there and disrupt Ravenous Spirit. But if you have that amazing positioning here with a big front line that can zone for you, it can certainly do wonders for your team. Well, with the comp from Complexity, it looks like they just want to be the ones that start the engagements. And sometimes mm -hmm. when you're playing Nazebo, it's hard to get those engagements to be forced. Uh, Rhaegar will be the last pick up here for Complexity. But yeah, you're right. Nazebo can be great on here, but it looks like Complexity wants to be a little more aggressive. Raynor can fend for himself with the hills, especially with Ancestral Healy being there as well. So that allows Arthas, Leoric, and Zeratul to work as a team to get to that back line. Fifth pickup coming for Cog. What are you thinking, Gilly? Well, first I want to say, Syndragosa plus Hyperion actually does so much to structures. Ooh, yeah. So if they can do that with an Immortal, that'd be pretty sick. Now Cognitive, they have a big pickup like you mentioned. I was going to say Nazebo, but Tassadar works too. Now they've got not only the Divine Shield for Kerrigan, but Plasma Shield 
for him too. She is going to be very, very difficult to take down. They've really picked a liking for Tassadar in this tournament. Yeah. Kaga is a team that didn't play a whole lot of Tassadar prior to this event, but it's you know it's show, it's done a lot of good for them in this tournament, and I'm loving the pickups at this point. Yeah, I know. I really think that is to Ivy Slime too, because he is the player for them too. So picking him up, having a little bit of a different synergy with him, has brought around this Tassadar play. It's pretty cool to see. Yeah, and it's uh, Tassadar is a hero that again hasn't got much play in the last month or so. So some people kind of forget how strong that Archon can really be and how much damage it can put out. And with Warriors being a a huge pickup for a lot of teams. They kind of naturally group up and now suddenly you have splash damage and damage hitting them. That is a world of hurt and you're seeing Tassad are pulling that off. So with the entire comps being picked up, we're definitely going into game number three, the last match of the night. It's going to be fun. Battlefield of Eternity will be the final battleground of the evening. And one of these teams will advance to the next round with this win. The team that falls here, they will go to the lower bracket for another chance to advance to the championship bracket, which will be concluding tomorrow afternoon. All right. Well, we are going into the game, so we'll say goodbye to Trixler, and we'll see you afterward for some awesome analysis. Here we go. Let's check out Battlefield of Eternity. This is it, Gilly. One more game will secure one team a spot in the championship bracket tomorrow. The other team will have to continue their battle with an additional match in the lower bracket. Kagadim on the blue side with Glaurung playing as Kerrigan. Ayakona, Anuther, Silo gonna be playing Johanna. Hospital will be playing Jaina and Ivy Slam. Rounds at the team as Tassadar once more and their opponents and rivals tied in this series. We have Complexity with Jaximus playing Zeratul, Hans on Leoric, Caterpillar playing Arthas, Trummel on Brainer, and rounding it out, the support and the captain, Blinks on Rhaegar. Okay, here we go. We do see there's actually just a heavy presence here in the bottom lane for Complexity. They're probably just trying to find a single hero to pick off, but Pretty much the same idea here for COG. They have Tassadar in the top lane. Silo sitting here in the bush waiting. And then we have three members lurking in the bottom. Yeah, realizing that this lurking from Cognitive is something that they are known to do. And of course, it is very, very scary with the Kerrigan. We're seeing Complexity be very passive and completely fine with doing so. There's no reason to step outside of that gate with the Kerrigan here. But it will allow Cognitive to start getting this lane pushed, hopefully draining some of the ammo on the tower. Then look, Howling Blast, you've been spotted, Flower. Yeah, that's actually just great map awareness here. And things are pretty even at this point. Pass under just dimensional warping to safety, stalling out or disrupting the Drain Hope channel from the Orc. Anything weird on these talents, I don't think so. We have Give Me More on Uther that's going to give him a lot of sustain, and yeah. everything else looks pretty much normal. We do have Season Marksman on Zeratul, so we're not going to be looking at him oh, yeah. picking up globes, so he will be trying to lane in. We may see him even trying to leave those long immortal battles to make sure to clear out the lanes, just so he is continually trying to build that up. Siphoning impact for Kerrigan, so we will be looking, instead of the sharpened blades for more damage, looking for more sustainability there in terms of keeping alive. Yeah, I'm loving these new Kerrigan styles, like the hypermobility with the Ravage diving all over the place with clean kill and all the cool talents that exist here in her kit. The Immortals spawning in just another 10 seconds. Cog in an excellent position. If they rotate through this right side of the battleground, they will launch themselves and Cattle and Blinks are on their way up. Oh, they might be looking to go right by there and they're oh, They knew, they expected this and a beautiful play there by Cattle. Oh, so fantastic, the Howling Blast on point and moving away just in the nick of time to avoid that Primal Grasp. Now we will see the team turning to go after the Immortals. Now some teams will choose to just uh, attack right away. Some are going to look at defending. It's always nice to get in a team fight underneath your opponent's, or underneath your own Immortal, so that your opponents uh, might get stunned as they do throw out a couple of different stuns, like we're seeing right there. Yeah, they're already doing so much damage, but both teams are actually, we have Cognitive in the advantageous position right now, getting just a bit more damage done to the Immortal before they reset and reposition, and immediately they're throwing everything they have here. They should be the ones getting the first Immortal of this game. Yeah, both teams really just trying to work on the Immortal, not even trying to defend at all, really thinking that they can do it. It's down to the wall here, but it will be actually wow. Cognitive who will be able to just barely get the Immortal here. Does it even have shields? No, <laughs> it's the smallest amount of shields possible. Okay, well, we do see the Immortal being picked up, and it will make its way up here to the top lane in the Battleground, where Cog is getting in position to push with it. 
Yeah, I think that's, that's pretty interesting. A lot of times when it's so low like that, you can typically see teams kind of try to split push here, but they're going to at least try to get some towers down with it, knowing that it's fairly weak. There's some melee, a lot of melee actually on the side of complexity, so they would have to kind of poke their heads out in that regard, and they might just throw some damage on them with that, but they won't be able to pick up a tower here. Looks like a second tower will fall too, and they will be content with the amount of experience they got there. Also soaking still in the bottom lane too with Tassadar as uh, they continue to just slightly edge ahead with these gears. Yeah, just thinking about their composition, I actually really enjoy the top when it, when it comes to pushing with it, because the Immortals throw down those stuns on the ground. If you can pull them in with the Condemn or the Primal Grasp of Kerrigan and just combo the stuns with your Immortal, that's such a big power that you don't have normally. It really is. And then you've also got Jaina there to slow them down with the Snowstorm, too. So it's going to be able to hit a lot more people if they get pulled in there. And then the split push of Tassadar is very, very nice, too, so that they still do have the ability to really get a split push going, even though it is just Tassar. Look, these towers are out of ammo here, and it's just been Tassar down here. Yeah, he's got such good lane clear. He's got such good sustain for his team. A very versatile hero, and this is giving Cog the opportunity to pick up those top siege camps. Now they've made their way to the bottom, where they're picking up yet another camp of the Goat Boys. Yeah, already putting complexity on the back foot here. And if they continue to grab these, uh, they've even still got their uh, Shaman camp to be able to get to. Then they can help to maybe get the, the, the jump on the next Immortal phase for complexity, because they'll still be trying to clear their lane. Yeah, but Cole's doing a good job soaking. Glowering taking a lot of damage, but pulling in two targets. The stun goes down from Iacona, but Glowering is taking so much damage. Has to turn around, and he does fall trading one for one with Arthas. Oh, but Trumbull fairly low here. Blink's going to be able to keep him alive. One for one, though. Pretty good for both sides, but there is still this push happening as the Immortals start to spawn. So we will see uh, if they're able to clear it out in time. Should be okay, but the Cosmo is pushing now. They force Complexity to decide, or, or, or the Shaman, do we defend the Shaman, or do we get the jump on starting to attack the Immortal? Yeah, that's the big benefit of stalling this out. It's kind of akin to Haunted Minds, where you pick up the goals defensively, right? This is a split focus situation where you're going to have that Fallen Shaman camp pushing, where, and you can then put your complete focus on the enemy team's Immortal. Yeah, and those Shaman do serious work, too. Especially if you're far away from them, it takes a long time to rotate to them, but we've got an engagement wow. here as Trouble is falling so incredibly. Incredibly low. Rainer already out of this fight. In the combo of Kerrigan pulling in Arthas, Cattle will fall as well. The two warriors going down very early. Rainer and Arthas. Hotted and really showcasing the power of this Kerrigan. Actually picking up the Zerglings there, the Talon. Not one we'd see a whole bunch there for Kerrigan oh, at level 7. Stun. stun on top. Jaxmus blinks away. Is going to have to try to take the safe way back, realizing that that was full of peril trying to head straight to the floor. Okay, but during this time, we do see that Leoric was able to step up here to the top, try to force Glowering off, and they've caught up a little bit here in terms of the damage done to the Immortals. Just about 50% health here on the red team Immortal. They will now reset for the second phase. I think you like to call this the halftime show as they go to battle and then head back out. And guys, look at this poll, so incredibly close. Who do you think is going to take it? You can still vote, tweet using the hashtag HeroesWC and the hashtag of whatever team you think will take the series. It's another race here to do the most damage with Jaina showing up here. It will be cognitive once again, picking up an immortal. This time, I believe it will go down to the bottom portion of the battleground. It's really interesting that we're not really seeing them try to defend too much their immortals. It's really just been about trying to race. It's almost like a base race, but it's an immortal race instead. But at least Complexity can deal a lot of damage to the fact that even though, yes, they have an immortal pushing against them, it doesn't do too much. It's not so snowball-y because of the fact that they don't really have a shield on it. And here they are pushing on forward. They're going to try to eliminate this fort. Level 10 just about attained. That's the big story here. Cog knows they're going to have heroics first. Here they go, picking up Blessed Shield, Maelstrom, Divine Shield, Archon, and it should be the Water Ellie. There it is. And now it's really just Cole waiting for the heroics. Yeah, Complexity steps completely back, knowing that there's no way they want to deal with everything that Cognitive can dish out now with their heroic abilities. And that does allow them to continue the push a, a little bit more than maybe they would have otherwise, getting another tower down in front of this first key. Okay, well, the Immortal does end up falling, and Cog finds their favorite hiding place where Cattle walks by, and the damage is being thrown out. But the heal from Rengar trying, and a big VP is thrown out to buy some time for the team to get here in time. Oh, uh, Jax is going down the Ancestral Heal, does connect after the Void Prison is finished, but there is a Divine Shield on top of the Maelstrom. 
and it is melting hot. He does race walk away, still nobody down on the side, but Cattle is getting pulled back in into a hammer up. Does it barely take life? Army of the Dead, not quite enough to keep Arthas safe. You know, a great defense by Complexity, but it was just a little bit too little to save all of their team. Only Arthas fell in that battle. A nice setup by Cognitive. Complexity at least seems drain cognitive enough that Cog are going to go for these very forward shaman and be too little to risk so complexity in that regard. Still getting some pressure back on the battleground. They may even rotate up and try to get the Kajra there on top too, since that's where their shaman are pushing. But no, it looks like instead they're concerned about the defense and how far this lane is pushed bottom because it is already at keep structures. Yeah, and just one mercenary camp left on the battleground. We're going to see Complexity clean up this bruiser camp here in the bottom. The, the siege camp, excuse me. The goat boys, I like to call them. The goat boys. We've got talent, and we, we talked a little bit about uh, the heroic abilities, but we do have a cleanse there for Rhaegar. So realizing the power of cognitive, we're not going to see uh, maybe the Earth Shield or something like that. They realize that they really need the cleanse because of all of the stunts and the control that Cognitive do have. Yeah, absolutely crucial in this situation. And Uther's just going for the full heals. He's got that wave of light upgraded. Yeah, Cog really do like that wave of light and the Boundless Conviction uh, builds there. So no cleanse on their side, but there's not really too much they have to cleanse against. But we've got another fight here happening and trouble getting melted so fast. It says to heal is going to uh, be I think you up. hit the wrong target yeah. there. That's not what they wanted to have happen. A big VP thrown out, buying some time, but does it matter? Blinks is very low cattle, has the Army of the Dead, and Cognitive realizes not worth pressure. Let's go take care of those immortals. Absolutely. They've taken down Rainer now, a primary damage dealer for Complexity. Uh, now Complexity are still maybe going to try to defend at this point because they still do have the potential of catching somebody who gets stunned off of this immortal. So they could look to do that, realizing Cognitive going to back off and try to get maybe some other pushes going. Heal back up too. After a big fight, you really don't want to overstay your welcome at these immortals because you really can get a fight turned on you very quickly. And yeah, this is so smart by Cognitive. They're backing up, they're tapping the well, and they're picking up this camp of Fallen Shaman. Now they can go back to full power with a talent tier advantage as they reach level 13 just a moment from now, and they find Jax is out of position. Oh, he blinks over the wall. The shield glare is there to reveal him, and Iacona is rotating around. Jax hides in the corner. Is it enough? The permal grab does hit, and he does go down. Oh, now we've got Complexity once again with one of their big damage dealers down into this immortal phase, and they still don't have 13. You mentioned it. Cognitive now have picked that up, and they've got to be feeling very confident here as we move into this immortal phase, because yes, they've gotten the last two immortals, but they've been very, very close when it comes to shield. This time, they have the potential to get a much stronger one and get a lot more damage done to the complexity structures. In complexity, they're just sitting on the defensive. They know they cannot fight right now. They have to wait. Zeratul, he's back in action, making his way back onto the battleground. But 50% of the health on that immortal has already gone down. In cognitive, they're focusing it down. I really like this move again. Once again, Cognitive going to back off. Look for trying to pick somebody up. It is very difficult once again to try to attack underneath the opponent's immortal, but oh, they're, they're going to do it. Yeah, they're collapsing here. We do see the big heels going off. The Divine Shield keeping Kerrigan alive, but a Void Prism locking out to here as it expires. This is such a bad spot for Complexity. They're just getting torn apart. Trouble will be eliminated, and that's three for nothing in favor of Cognitive. That was an amazing psionic storm. It's like, yeah, you can retreat, but you're going to walk through this storm on the way. And once again, Cognitive making some really cool decisions here, realizing there are three heroes down on the side of Complexity. Make that four as they pick up Leor, and they're going straight for a keep here. They don't need to get the Immortal right away. Patience here. Knowing they can get the keep first, they know that this is not the side that Immortal is going to push because the fort is still up on the other side. So they're going to grab this and then they can go back and take out that objective. Yeah, giving up the keep here is like going to get coffee at the coffee shop but not buying donuts. Like, why would you not buy donuts? Just take care of it. I don't know. I could never imagine not buying donuts, but they are getting engaged on by Complexity. Oh, huh. the Jukes, Glaurung just diving forward, buying time for his team. He's buying so much time, actually. He knows he was going to go down there, and this is an excellent play. All this time, they're backing up. They can just do some more damage to that Immortal, but it looks like they're playing pretty passively considering their health bars. Yeah, Glaurung, man, the playmaker, even in so many ways. This even time, in death. Even in death. Now, positive uh, are, like you mentioned, low, and now they've lost uh, Kerrigan. So it does give time for Complexity to put damage on the Immortal, but whether they'll be able to burn it completely down before we see a defensive rotation. In fact, 
Pumpniver just trying to throw enough damage down. It's very difficult to try to defend them when it's already so low and they have those psionic swords to be able to just whittle it down. Yeah, they're doing a good job though. Leoric and Zeratul with this defense did a decent amount of, you know, defense for their immortal and they were able to burn down the blue team immortal to about 25% of its health. Yeah, so it's still not as suit as super strong as it looks like it could have been. So a really good job by them buying enough time. Unfortunately, oh. there is a blessed shield. And now trouble so difficult. He's, Adrenaline Rush did pop, but now it will, the rotation will not be in time to save him. Rainer going to be down during this defense. Already the fort down to half two. This will go down so quickly. And this is going to give level 16 the cognitive end with their immortal. So the bottom keep has already fallen. And now Cog is looking to put the nail in the coffin by eliminating the last structure outside of the core. An imposing presence picked up on Johanna is so nice too versus complexity because we not only have Rainer, but we have Zeratul with that auto attack build with the season marksman and the focus attack and even the follow through. So it's going to, if they attack Johanna, their uh, attack speed will be reduced by 40%. That is quite a bit, so they're going to avoid doing that as often as they can. But this keep is being seized up. We do see the Immortal doing so much damage, and they have to put their focus on Johanna to force her back. The damage isn't enough. It's going to be very close here. The keep is getting rather low. The cleave not going to go off, and they do manage to defend. He'll defend it for now, but at any point, if Cognitive can take uh, even somebody down or just even rotate in secretly, if Plexi push too far out on the map, they'll be able to take that out very quickly. Now, once again, very fast decision-making by Cognitive in their rotation, already picking up the Cogra and Bottom, as well as their uh, Fallen Shaman on their side, too. So they're going to be a, a, a big push here in Bottom, and that's important because the keep is already down there. So they're once again going to put Complexity on the back foot. Talking to play has been so clean in this game. They've only lost two heroes total versus the 12 takedowns that they've done against Complexity. Picking up the bottom mercenary camp as well as those fallen shaman on the left. They're now pushing forward towards this final remaining mercenary camp. Now these shaman are pretty easy to steal. There's a lot of space around there and they're going to use that to their advantage, especially because Complexity still don't have their level 16 talent. So this is a scary fight they are going to try to take, but it's going to be iffy. I Silo, though, is getting very low. Getting low, but the Battle Cruiser has been summoned. VP is thrown out. Divine Shield and an almost connection on the Ancestral Heal there. This looks like they're going to succeed in sealing the camp and winning a big team fight. Blaze has fallen. That's three for one in favor of Cognitive. They might be able to end the game with this. They might indeed. They're looking at it. They're trying to get through. Cloudrong actually is already on the other side of the gate. Silo, you're going to have to go around. You won't be quite so lucky here. But we're pushing in. We've got lots of camps, but already in the bottom, it's open and it's pushed up to the core already. Cognitive, will they be able to do this? Looks like 16 more seconds until every member of Complexity is back up. The Fallen Shaman trying to pressure that top keep. The fact that the Goat Boys are attacking this middle tower means they're not fighting the core. So Cog just says, you know what, let's back up, take the Immortal, and we'll win from there. Yeah, just really great job by Cog in their decision making. We sometimes see them make the too aggressive move. And today, they've been showing such fantastic ability to just back off, take the safer route. And that's indeed what they're doing. The top keep, yes, it's still there, and the Immortal will push toward that, toward, toward that first. But it's already incredibly low because of the Shaman. All of the teams here in NA just trying to be more passive when they need to. I mean, they're getting more reserved with the decision making, and it's showing off here in this match for sure. And Central Heal used rather early on Jaximus, and a lot of AoE damage going off from that Psionic Storm. Yeah, there's the Divine Shield on top of Kerrigan, too, as she goes in for a takedown on Jaximus. He's going to be able to blink away. Still, we're looking at the defense, but Zeratul will go down already. A big damage dealer down on the side of Complexity as they're almost losing cattle, too. Will he be able to get away? No, he will also fall. Use army a little bit late there. That is going to be three down to the not none on the side of Cog. The sun coming out. Glaurung is so very low, but Wraithwalk has to be used, and he does manage to get away. And now the Immortals will transition into the second phase. And immediately, Cog goes back. They know that there are three heroes down, yes, but they are also still very low, and they don't want to lose anybody, not a single hero in this next phase. It's so important. If they can get that full Immortal, there is no defense that will keep Complexity alive. A two and a half level advantage for Cognitive. They're about to have a near full power Immortal at this rate. 
on top of it. The fact that they've gone 17 and 3 in terms of takedowns, well, it's really showing off. Yeah, it's a, it's a little one-sided there for sure. They have all the structures down too. They still have both of their forts up. They're looking at dangerously close at a uh, their storm tier talents too, but I don't know that we're going to get to that point in this game, guys. Yeah, this Immortal is going to march down that top lane. It's going to slay through that final remaining keep. And Cognitive will look to end the game if they can. All right, we do have 16 talents picked up, and we do have Giant Killer and Berserk on top of Rainer. So really, they do have that auto attack damage as long as they're not using it on that Johanna, who will, of course, have that imposing presence. They will start to be able to do a lot of damage there, especially because the attack speed will be so buffed from that Berserk. Okay, Wraith walking out of there, but the Ancestral Hero will be there just in time. Does it matter? Hans is taking critical damage. That Rabbit Primal Grass combo doing so much. But using March of the Black King to just try to get out of there. He manages to survive, but will Cattle be as lucky? I don't think so, Gilly. There is a Psionic Storm to take out Arthas Leoric. Yes, he used March of the Black King to get out, but he didn't really get much of a heal off of it. And Cog are racing past this Immortal. Oh. And here he is still pulling on Zeratul. Two down now. Only the three remaining for the defense, and I think we will see Cognitive moving out of this group, moving on into the final four teams in the America's Championship. What an upset. A lot of teams said Complexity would be coming here to win before this turn, but Cognitive.